Okay, people, leaving Manila, sitting in typical Manila traffic here. But this is like the first leg and this little journey down to Puerto Galera. Got a little beach resort down there. I'm going to check out the very end of the beach. So, put the fan room on a go to for $10 a night, people. 500 pesos. But the first step is to get the hell out of this, this mess right here. It's called Metro Manila Traffic. So we're going to head down to the pier in Batangas and try to figure out when the ferry leaves and how to get over there. Alright, here we go. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Alright folks, this is how you stir up a jeepney full of Filipinas right here. Baby, <laughs> he's in there playing cards in the back right there. Oh my goodness. He's in there playing cards, so we were telling them what they had, what each other had. Alright. Alright folks, welcome to the Port of Batangas right here. Nice, beautiful day. So we get through security right here with these kuyas. Okay, folks, here we are. Just got, just got here to uh, Batangas Pier, and we're going to Sabam. And the kuya said that we got like 10 minutes to make this boat. There we go. When you come around here, now there's a clearly marked sign that tells you to go to Passenger Terminal bu Building Three. Which way? Straight. Puerto. Hello, sir. Where's sub which way is Sabang? This way? Oakman, Sabang. How many person? Okay, so we got all these middle guys. We got all these middlemen and porters right here. And we got this gentleman right here, but I don't see a ticket counter. So we're going to the ticket counter. Right. And like anything, folks, when you're traveling, you're going to get meet with a lot of middlemen. And what you do is you just keep walking. And you get to the ticket counter. Puerto Galera ticketing office. So again, folks, when, when I take... My friend, we don't need your help, man. Thank you. Thank you. You're going to have to deal with middlemen wherever you go in the world. All right? But just don't listen to them and damn sure don't follow them. Okay? So we're coming right here. It says Puerto Galera ticketing office. And then here we go right here. Manolo shipping lines. Father and son lines. This is Saban at 245. And at 230. So it's a crap shoot in here. But you know what? When you see the locals going, follow the locals. Right your name. You go to Sabang, write your name. Okay, how much is the ticket, my friend? 230 only. 230 and it's going to Sabang? 230 each. Okay, 230 each. All right, and it's leaving at 245? Until 3 o'clock. Until 3 o'clock. You gave him 5 550 for one ticket. So you give 10 pesos, sir. You give 10 pesos. This is uh, the thing you're going to go through, folks. You give Bring the exact change. Okay. Because your change is uh, for only. The exact change. Your change is only for tea. This year, 50. Change 10. No, 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 this year, 50. Give me again, give me again. Your change is only for me. Hey. This is your money. Ma'am, ma where's my change? I gave you 500. Okay, come here. Come here. I want my change right here in the window. Right here. Okay, so I gave him five. There's one, two, three, 20. Folks, when you come here, this is the Philippines. Get ready to endure some, some fucking bullshit and, and some chaos and not having the, the exact change, all right? If I want to give you one piece of travel advice for the Philippines, you better bring some small bills and you better have the exact coins, okay? Because nobody has change. They're going to try to jack you around, tell you to go get change. Welcome to the Philippines. I have to go over here. I pay the, 
pay the term. We're the terminal fee, sir, yeah, right over here? Okay. All right, so after, after you get this ticket, you have to come over here and pay the terminal fee, all right? And it's 30 pesos regular, 24 for the student, 21.43 for senior citizen. Hello, how are you? How much? 30 pesos? Okay. All right, so 30 pesos. We got the terminal fee right here, folks. All right. So we paid our terminal fee. And we paid 230. So so far we're out 260 pesos. And it's just a crapshoot. We went to the far left over there, that father and son lines, but all these are the same, it looks like. Puerto Galera. We're going to Puerto Galera. So it looks like we gotta go right through here. Hello, sir. Going to Puerto Galera. Where do we go? That right here? Thank you very much. Okay. All I know is I got a ticket going to Saban. And then I'm gonna go from there. Probably gonna have to take me a tricycle over to my place. Right, so passengers going to Puerto Galera. Here we go. All right, we're coming in security, so I'm gonna cut this off for security. All right, folks, once you get past security, all right, now you're here in the calm of the waiting area. So I gotta figure out where to go. I think my boat's about to leave too, so I gotta check out my little ticket right here. Okay, I think we're we're gate number three. Which gate number we gotta go to? Gate three. It's gate three. And where's gate three? This way? This way, sir. Okay, thank you. And this has been a surreal kind of experience here because security is asking me, what is the purpose of my video? She got some food options here. That's kind of a dumbass question. I'm a tourist. You can ask everybody with a cell phone what the hell the purpose of their video is. Come on, this is, what is this, almost 2018? Everybody's taking video. Everybody's got a cell phone. People going to the beach, and you're going to ask me what's the purpose of my video. So here we go. Yes, sir. Not yet boarding? Yeah. Okay, all right, so I'll go sit down and wait. Thank you. I felt like I just went through a blender, a washing machine, and a dryer here at the Port of Batangas trying to get from the taxi to the, to the terminal gate. That was chaotic. I've traveled all over the Philippines. I've been around every airport, a lot of ports. I have to rate that experience here in Batangas as absolutely excruciating. I mean, from the little middlemen and the porters hassling and hollering at you when you first come in there. Okay, I'm used to that, but it was a little aggressive. And then trying to come in and trying to make a decision on which boat to go with and people yelling at you. Just tell, trying to tell people, hey, just get the fuck away from me. All right? <laughs> you know, so then trying to get change at the counter. So, if I can't give you any more travel advice, you've got to make sure you have small bills and you've got to make sure you've got to have exact change when you go pay for this, these things, bus tickets, ferry tickets, terminal fees. Folks, all this little small things, you have to make sure you've got the exact change. So after that, it's still chaos, getting over to pay the terminal fee and then getting the security. You go to security, and legitimately, I mean, they've got a pretty decent security force here. They look very professional. they got an x-ray machine. But as soon as I clear the x-ray machine, i got two people on me. One security guard and look like one manager and in plain clothes asking me, Sir, what's the purpose of your video? I said, I'm a fucking tourist. There's goddamn 30 people in here shooting iPhone video and taking pictures and selfies. What, what, what do you mean? What's the purpose of my video? I mean, like, this is almost the year 2018. Every some bitch in this building has got a damn phone taking pictures. Oh, by the way, I'm on my way to a very popular beach area, and I'm carrying a backpack, and I look like a damn tourist. 
what's the purpose of my video? I'm a fucking tourist. What kind of fucking question is that? Then my buddy goes through security and they say, hey, you can't take that lighter. You know, we gotta take your lighter. Well, here's the thing. There's smoking allowed on these boats. If you go to the rear of the boat, you can smoke on the boats. But security won't let you bring a lighter through security. So my buddy, not wanting to reward him, you know, dropped the lighter on the ground, smashed it, and said, okay, here you go. It's just bullshit. Obviously, they're pocketing fucking lighters over there, you know, like they were going out of style. But you ask the boat guy here, he's like, yeah, smoking's loud on the boat at the rear of the boat. Ridiculous. So, right now, I'm rating Batangas Port. Even though there's a lot of security here, which you would think is a good thing, and it's clean, which you think is a good thing, I judge things off of the overall experience and my overall experience of trying to transit the port of Batangas was shit, and I'm pissed off. So Batangas port, you get number one for the most fucked up port in the Philippines because you pissed me off. I mean, I've been in little ports where, you know, they're out in the middle of nowhere, there's no electricity, but you know what? The people are friendly. And I'm not saying the people here weren't friendly. But I'm saying you need to, whoever's in charge of the port, you need to take your ass through the process and realize the problems. Because this was not a good experience for me. I'm a very patient traveler. I've been all over this country. So even though the environment here and the setting looks nice, my experience, I'm stressed the fuck out. Unbelievable. All right, folks, I'll stop bitching, but next stop, we're going we're, we're gonna to get on this boat. We're going to head over to Sabang on uh, Puerto, well, Puerto Galero, Puerto, Puerto Galera on Mindoro. Never been there, so I'm looking forward to checking it out. Thanks for listening to my bullshit, and we'll be on the boat in a few minutes. Walking the plank on this boat right here. This is a, this is like a like a big pump boat. Hello, gentlemen. How are you? All right. Thank you very much for your help. Thank you. All right, folks. This is like a like a big pump boat. Sorry, bro. And if if you get seasick, I mean, on any boat, I recommend that you sit in the back because the back of the boat is the most stable part. If you don't get seasick, you sit in the front because it's quieter. You're back here with the motor. This is also the smoking area back here. Okay, but if I have a choice, I like to sit right here. Because if this boat goes down, I got nobody in my way to get off of this bitch right here. And in the back, folks, you got the CR. If you're not familiar with the Philippines, that's a comfort room. In other words, the restroom. If you do have CRs, they're probably a little bit, well, they're obviously rudimentary. But there are restrooms on the boat, and you can smoke back here in the back, all right? You know, just FYI, they don't like cameras in this port. At least they don't like my camera. And, you know, this is the thing about when you, when you carry, like, professional-looking cameras, or if you put them on any type of hand grip or a mount or something like that, people are always going to screw with you if you look like you're a professional photographer. Now, if you're just holding your cell phone, like you're taking selfies like everybody else, nobody, nobody's going to bother you. But I'm using this ReadyCam um, uh, you know, holder and this ReadyCam grip. Obviously, you know, got my uh, earphones here, so I can use this microphone. And so they want to screw me. And if you're carrying a uh, you know a big camera, a professional-looking video camera, they're gonna do the same shit. So it's a whole lot easier when you're using you know iPhone photography, cell phone photography. But the minute you put it on a grip, you know certain places are gonna mess with you. And even when I was walking in the boat here, the guy with the bullhorns hollered at me, he, uh, no use of the cell phone. Come on, it's ridiculous. Tourists, tourists, tourists with their cell phones. 
Ah, uh, come on. It's, it's just fucking extreme. So I don't like this this port right here in Batangas. They're on my shit list because uh, the reason that uh, some of the things that they do, there's no logic in it. It's just pissed me off. We're gonna get out of here, folks. Uh, if you take one of these boats, I also recommend you sit on the outside. Don't sit in the middle because if one of these boats goes down, all I gotta do is go out this window. I'm gonna live. If you're in the middle in the herd, you're going down with a herd. All right. They got life jackets. Put your life jacket on, especially if you can't swim. We got brand new life jackets here, and you'll be fine. Okay. Folks, typically, you know, typically these kids were walking around the boat and swimming. Most of the time, they're not trying to steal your shit, but don't trust them. Um, most of the time, they're just looking for some food or a handout. I'm not going to start the debate whether or not you should give them uh, food, money, whatever. Everybody's got a different opinion, but most of the time, they're not trying to steal your stuff, especially in a setting like this. But again, don't trust them. Make sure your gear is secure. You got these kids swimming around in the in this nasty ass water right here, and climbing up on the boat. So, you know, make sure you got your wallet, your uh, sensitive items secure. We're out of here. We are out of here. Turn this little boat around, get the hell out of Batangas Pier. Cause there ain't nothing I like about this place. Leaving this bitch. Most of these little boats over here, whether they're 20 feet long or a big pump boat, they got these outriggers right here. And I'm not sure what that's made out of, but like the smaller ones, I mean, obviously it's bamboo going over to the side, but most of the smaller ones, they just have bamboo for the pontoons. You know, just several uh, stalks of bamboo tied together and that keeps the boat from flipping over. Little outrigger pontoons made out of bamboo. Got the crew pulling up the anchor. And you know, folks, you can take these, these bigger boats over there. But you know what? This is more exciting. If you get a chance, take one of these pump boats, one of these outriggers, whatever you want to call it. Much more interesting. how you get the water out of the bilge. This gentleman right here pumping this out. There's no electrical pumps. You got water down in the bilge and he's got this pump right here just pumping it out. I don't know if you can see it but we got some serious rain coming up there. It's coming down in the distance. We're going to start hitting some real waves in this little pump boat. I'm not sure what this thing is on that hill over there. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if that's a lighthouse or what the heck that thing is. See here, let the wind, let the wind and the waves and the water just whip you right in your face. Beautiful. Okay, we're about five minutes out. Pump in right here. The rain kind of held off, so it might not get wet. Getting off this little boat. That's part of the adventure, folks. This is this is Sabang right here. The next stop is gonna be White Beach. So I gotta figure out what's the best scheme and maneuver to get to my place. I may just take a tricycle. Just get off here, check out Sabang, and then get a tricycle over to my place. What a cool little town. Every place you go to is different, but this is quaint. This is like a little village in the Swiss Alps, right here on the water. I am digging this place. Welcome to Saban. Yeah, I'm definitely getting off of here. Then I'm gonna figure out how to get over to my resort, but I'm checking this out first. Cool. We're gonna get off this boat here and it's raining. This is Saban, Sabang, Saban. 
It's not where I'm staying, but this place looks so cool. I'm gonna get off here right now and check it out. I'll figure out how to get to my place later. It's a problem I can figure out later. So, it just looks too cool. You know, every little place you go to, every little island you go to is different, but I don't know, this one's a little quaint. <laughs> People laughing at me because I'm talking to this camera. But it's the price you pay. Be the one man film crew, this little travel show. Once the travel channel picks this up, folks, I have my own little, little film crew here. I just came from Alona Beach not too long ago. I like Alona Beach, but this place here is a total, total different atmosphere, a little different vibe. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's our good captain right here. All right, got us here safe and sound. All right. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, and folks, you need a porter. Be a porter here. You have your bags. All right. These gentlemen here, they're gonna help you off because the boat's rocking a little bit. All right, James. Okay, thank you very much, my friends. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, folks. This is slippery. Always talk about wearing your proper shoes if you're a foreigner. All right. Safe Wear you some proper shoes while you're on the ferry so you don't bust your ass walking on that plank. Here's kind of a little look around. It is raining. Always uh, travel with a backpack, folks. Best way to travel is fast and light. That means put everything on your back. So if you're dragging a big ass bag, especially when it's raining, it's a pain in the ass. Look at that, welcome to Saban, your gateway to the center of centers of marine biodiversity. I don't even know if that doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay, here we go here. Water taxi, little schedules. Okay, so keep walking past all the all the log jam traffic here. Oh, I think maybe we got to pay a little fee. Pay some type of environmental fee, probably. All these little places in the Philippines, these mayors, the greedy bastards have started charging tourism fee, eco-tourism fee, tourism impact, ecological. They're all bullshit fees because it's just a... It's just that the, uh, the mayor is stealing money out of your pocket, folks. You know, that's all government does. Rich people take the money from us, poor people. That's all it is. We'll figure out what this is. Figure out exactly what this is, people. Hello, sir. How are you? What's this? For environmental. It's an environmental fee. Yeah. I think I just won for me. How much is it? Fifty pesos. This goes to the mayor's pocket. No. For the mayor's fund, no. huh? Okay. I, all right. Let me get my ten pesos back. I don't want the mayor getting my extra 10 pesos. There's one. So it's 50, 50 for this environmental user's fee. Thank you very much, sir. All right, thank the mayor too for taking my 50 pesos. Thank you. All right. Okay, so we'll figure out how to get the hell out of here. All right. Get your 50 pesos. Pay your uh, 50 pesos to the mayor. And we'll take a look at it over here. Let's like get away from all this crowd. So that's the environmental users fee ticket, people. 50 pesos. And like I said, basically what's happening everywhere you go in the Philippines is, uh, you know, everybody's trying to take a piece of the pie. That's the way it is here. So, all right. I got my 
Got my environmental impact because I'm a fucking tourist fee. And now I'm gonna walk around. You know what? All forms of government. Who said it? I don't even know who the quote is. But basically, uh, basically, what the saying is is that government, government is the enemy of all men. Okay, I'll stop the political shit. But you know what? I hate paying the fucking mayor fifty pesos to come here to his town and spend fucking money. All right, so there's looking down the main drag. And here's the passenger terminal we just got off at. Nice little dirt parking lot here. Let's take a walk around and see what this place has to offer. It's kind of a rainy day, so probably not the best day to be walking around. But right here off the bat, let's check out the price of this coconut juice. Hey, how much the coconut juice? Uh, 30. It's 30 for the big one? 20. So 30, 30 for the big one right here? Yeah. All right. I'll be back in a minute then. Thank you. So, I got to stop saying so, people. Look at this. Got some fried chicken over here. And I got a nice liquor store. What is this? Blue Water Dive? Look at a little restaurant there. What a quaint little town, people. This is quaint. Let's take a walk up through the center here. Let's take a little walk. This place called Hippo's Music Bar might be my spot tonight. Saban Restaurant. Hello, how are you? Not good. Folks, I quit. I quit drinking a month ago. I've been sober for a month. And traveling is so much easier when you are drunk. It really is. Traveling is so much easier when you're drunk. That's just the way it is. When you're drunk, you're a lot more patient, a lot more tolerant of a lot of things. A little fresh market right here. Laundry. Sabang restaurant. Sabang sports bar. Tropicana. Alright, so this might be my spot right here. That's going to be my spot right now. I'm walking in here right now because it is raining. And I'm going to get me a spot right here at this table, folks. All right. Hello, beautiful ladies. How are you? Wow, you guys look so good. That's why I had to stop in here. Look at this little castle place. Hotel Tropicana. It's too cool. Okay, so here's what happened. I got off. I got off the boat right over here, and I walked up the street right here, and I sat down in a bar. And it was raining for a while. It's not raining now, obviously. And if you talk to the tricycles to go to uh, Talipanan, 500 pesos. That's way too much. So I came over here. I talked to my man. What's your What's your name, bro? Hiro. Huh? Hiro. Hiro? Okay. And I got this coconut juice for 30 pesos, right? It was 30 pesos? 30 pesos. All right. So this is a great coconut juice. Come see my friend right here. Okay, so you got the coconut juice stand. And then I came over here and I talked to these beautiful ladies at this little stand. And they told me to take the hobble hobble for how much? For 200 pesos? Yes. 200 pesos, right? It's okay, it's just YouTube, baby. It's not Hollywood. So 200 pesos. And while I'm standing there, this one gentleman somewhere over there said he's got a friend. So he's looking for a friend to try to take me on the motorbike, on the Hubble Hubble. Okay, on the motorbike, on the Hubble Hubble to go to, how do you say it, Talipanan? Oh, I'm sorry, Talipanan, right? Okay, so she told me how to say it, Talipanan. Yeah. With these two ladies? 
Oh, oh, with this guy here. Oh, I thought I was going with these two ladies over here in the yellow. Okay, so I'm going with this gentleman over here. But you sure he's got gas in this thing, man? All right, folks, let's talk to this guy. All right, sir, how are you? How are you, man? What's your name? All right, my name's Marcos. Nice to meet you. All right, you're going to take me over to Talipanan? All right, how much? Oh, this guy over here said 200. That's okay. All right. Thank you, ladies, once again. I'll see you guys later, okay? All right, bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.